Well, ladies and gentlemen, following these very powerful words of support, we now turn to the delegation of Iranian specialists and professionals who join us here today. And speaking on their behalf, joining us now is Professor Sulmaz Abu Ali and Miss Anahita Sami. Please, a very warm welcome to you. Good evening. It's a pleasure to stand here with you today and speak a few words with such distinguished guests, including those at Ashraf in Albania. My name is Dr. Solma Zabwali, and I'm a scholar, an athlete, and a former refugee. I received my PhD in the United States in the field of conflict resolution and am a three-time U.S. Uh, sorry, three-time world champion and 15-time U.S. national champion in traditional karate. The road to get here was never clear cut for me. At the age of three, I was transformed from a child surrounded by her family into a refugee on the run. The Iranian regime had targeted my parents for their affiliation with the MEK and for their opposition to the regime. To survive, we fled, finding our way to Pakistan, to Bangladesh, and later Canada, where we were granted political asylum by the UNHCR. Ultimately, we settled in the United States, and that is perhaps where part two of my story begins. Throughout this time, my parents would often speak to me about the sacrifices, the honesty, the value system, and the goals of the MEK. Their words turned into teaching lessons, which turned into a driving force that launched me toward achievement. I began to attend MEK events and connected with its members, learning firsthand what they are about and what they aim to do. What I found was an ironclad strength, an unconditional love for the people of Iran, and a relentless dedication to bringing freedom to Iran. What I found was a woman named Mrs. Maryam Rajavi, Mrs. Maryam Rajavi, who has spearheaded a clearly defined 10-point plan which outlines democratic values such as freedom of speech, complete gender e equity, an independent judiciary and a legal system, a free market economy, separation of religion and state, and a non-nuclear Iran. We see no other movement that has bled that has sacrificed, that has survived, and has inspired and empowered generations of men and women, boys and girls, toward the realization of a free Iran. This is the foundation that Mrs. Rajavi has sowed, and in my book, she is the real champion. And, and it's for this reason that I have gifted my gold medals to her. We. Iranians and the international community, we are lucky to have you on our side. Because only a ferocious and capable leader such as Mrs. Rajavi, with proven record of success, can guarantee a free Iran and an international community in which you, me, and our children can live peacefully. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, I am deeply honored to stand here among such esteemed individuals committed to the cause of freedom in Iran. As a practicing attorney in the United States, I must address a pressing issue that transcends national borders. The Iranian regime's unchecked manipulation of justice has enabled it to wield the legal system as a tool of oppression, both at home and abroad. This distortion of justice poses not only a domestic crisis, but also a global menace, jeopardizing the integrity of legal systems worldwide. I stand here today profoundly inspired by the words of my personal role model, Dr. Kazem Rajavi, 
who once declared human rights are a comprehensive concept. They are not divisible. <laughs> violation of any one right is a violation of all rights. This profound statement underscores our global in interconnection and emphasizes the universal imperative to uphold justice. The recent sham trials of 104 MEK members, including the leadership of the Iranian resistance conducted in absentia with Tehran's issuance of bogus uh, Interpol red notices, epitomizes this travesty. These in absentia death sentences against the resistance and Ashraf III leaders aims to pave the way for unrestrained terrorism. These individuals, many of whom sought refuge abroad decades ago, are now targets of Tehran's efforts to silence dissent and extend repression beyond its borders. Tehran's manipulation of international mechanisms like Interpol seeks to legitimize its prosecution of political opponents under the guise of legality. The reality, as noted by the UN Special Rapporteur on Iran, Professor Javid Rahman, is grim. Tehran's hands are stained with the blood of thousands of Iranians, particularly political prisoners, as evidenced by last week's report acknowledging the 1988 massacre of approximately 30,000 political prisoners as a crime of genocide. In his report based on expert analysis, Professor Rahman noted the 1988 massacre where approximately, again, 30,000 political prisoners were executed is a crime of genocide and called on the international community to take concrete steps towards an investigative and accountability mechanism, which would preserve all of the evidence and, of course, the testimonies. Tehran's inverted form of justice carries grave implications. Should the international community persist in appeasement policies, as we've mentioned many times today, it sends a perilous signal. Such was the case with the hostage diplomacy that returned both Asadullah Asadi and Hamid Nouri to Tehran. Tehran must not be allowed to exploit with impunity, justice with impunity. Such actions undermine the fundamental pillars of international law and human rights. Justice transcends international boundaries. It is fundamental to global peace and security. Democratic nations must condemn Tehran's judicial abuses and repressive tactics. They must ensure protection under international law for Iranian dissidents and especially MEK members in exile, safeguarding their rights to free speech and assembly. Moreover, Accountability for Iranian officials involved in the crimes against humanity, such as the 1988 massacre, is non-negotiable. Holding these perpetrators to account is crucial, not just for justice's sake, but to uphold the integrity of the law itself. Now that the Iranian people have once again boycotted this sham election, only 88% 88, uh, 88 did not vote rendering futile Khamenei's fraud and rigging. As Mrs. Maryam Rajavi, the president-elect of the National Council of Resistance of Iran, announced, this was a resounding no to dictatorship. The Iranian people's decisive vote for the overthrow of this regime is the message of victory for a free Iran with a democratic republic. In the relentless struggle on the streets of Iran amidst oppression and sacrifice, the brave souls fighting for freedom embody the essence of justice and human rights. Their courage challenges tyranny, forging a path toward a future where these fundamental rights prevail, not just for Iran, but for humanity as a whole. Thank you very much.